G'day, it's Pete here, and we're back for day five of the World Bridge series. Today we're into the quarterfinals, so let's check out all the action. So uh, here, the first match I wanted to look at, Nickel versus Lucky Four. And here there was an interesting option where uh, it went one heart by Greco, uh, they overcalled two diamonds, double by Hampson, Wang bid uh, three diamonds, and here they bid four clubs. Now, I'm pretty sure four clubs was artificial because... Uh, for the, him to actually jump to seven clubs here, I think this five club bid had to mean something different. So here I'm speculating, but I think four clubs might have been optional key card, which means like partner, if you've got a bad hand, first tell me. If you're not afraid of your hand, show me how many key cards you've got. And if that's the case, then five clubs would have shown two key cards with the Queen of Trumps. And here this double was just takeout. So from that point of view, if you know your partner's got two key cards with the Queen of Trumps, you also know they don't have three hearts because you've already opened one heart. They didn't uh, support your hearts. So here you can see that, well, we've got the two aces, we've got a club fit, and partner doesn't have uh, enough hearts that we can have a heart loser. So we can trump some hearts. We've got the two aces. What about the spade? Well, Hopefully partners either got another card or if they've got some extra trumps, maybe you can dump all of their uh, spades and then trump the spade instead. So here's the whole hand. Partners got that fifth club. So what that actually means is that uh, after you play hearts and maybe rough a heart, you can then dump all of the spades here and uh, make 13 tricks. So here, seven clubs, well done there. At the other table, they had an uncontested auction, so it went one heart pass and no trump. Um, so I'm not sure where they're going from here. Quite an unusual one, uh, but they got their way to six clubs uh, without intervention there. Remember, at this table, West got in there with a two diamond bid, quite aggressive, vulnerable against not. And this got raised to three diamonds, but they still managed to bid grand slam here. So some really interesting bidding and... Uh, like a short, sharp, shiny auction to uh, get to Grand Slam, which I found pretty interesting. So checking out the scores here. So Nickel had a fantastic set here, picking up uh, wins all over the board, plus 33 after the first round. Moving into stanza two, we'll look at another map. And uh, here both tables uh, had auctions to three no trumps. Um, this one is sort of a strong club auction, um, but... I wanted to look at this play problem here. So uh, here you get a club lead. Now, what would you do in this spot after you've won the king of clubs? So making a plan, we've got two potential options here. Uh, we could go after diamonds or maybe we could set up spades. So uh, diamonds looks like our best bet for extra tricks here. Um, we might be able to get that one club, three spades and a heart. And if you finesse diamonds, if that works, great. We've got five diamond tricks. If that doesn't work, they get into uh, the club suit. Um, but we started with five clubs. So if the clubs were 4-4, four, four, you can still afford to lose the diamond. Uh, so here they went ace of diamonds and ace of spades and then a spade over. Now, you might be wondering should you test the queen of spades or not so if you play the queen of spades here what you're doing is you're hoping that either spades are three three or if they're not three three that the diamond finesse will work whereas if you move straight into taking the diamond finesse what you're actually hoping is that either the diamond finesse works or the clubs are breaking so here they played a diamond to the jack this lost and at this stage, I'll just open up all the cards. The clubs don't break. So here they've actually got a five card club suit. And uh, one thing that might sway you is what the original lead was. So it said the two of clubs was led. Now, if they're playing fourth highest, uh, this uh, could easily throw them off there and think that that was a safer way to play. At the other table, again, we got a club lead. Uh, but here, what they did is they test, started with the Ace of Diamonds. The reason for this is checking for a Singleton Queen uh, with West. And now they went Ace of Spades, Spade, and then a third round of Spades. And when Spades are 3-3, three, three, we don't need the Diamond Finesse anymore. So they cash those and they play a Diamond to the King. And lo and behold, the Queen of Diamonds falls and you actually make 11 tricks here. So really interesting one of... 
do we play for clubs to be breaking or do we play for spades to be breaking and which line should we actually go uh, so here we got a game swing uh, in favor of Robinson here and uh, if we look, check out the scoreboard so if we look at the scorecard here big win for Robinson they're actually up 78 to 41 so plus 37 picking up heaps of imps in this set um, so great stanza for them. So, so moving into stanza three. Here we're looking at uh, Zimmerman team versus team black. And here I wanted to highlight a couple of interesting boards that really um, show the power of this two diamond bid uh, employed by the East West Bay. Um, so here, I think two diamonds is like, I have a weak week two in a major and it can be quite bad. So, uh, it probably varies a fair bit on vulnerability, but here they've got just a five card spade suit and they open two diamonds here and it went double and three hearts pass or correct. And now South's got this great diamond suit. So volunteered four diamonds and North is like, I have the best hand ever. Let's go and bids four no, five no and six no. Now uh, six no is off the uh, ace king and club. So it can go down instantly. Uh, but uh, here they lead a spade and at this stage you've got three spades three hearts and you've kind of got six diamond tricks the main issue here is entries so how do we actually get to the south hand so uh, first of all they also test hearts because hearts could be behaving uh, nicely uh, no they don't so uh, they catch their heart winners and then have to abandon that and they're just going all in they cash their spades and now what they want to do is just hope that there is a double turn uh, jack of diamonds. So they play ace of diamonds, queen of diamonds overtaking, and uh, the diamonds don't break. And now east west take the rest of the tricks. So six no trumps down four, but it actually had reasonable play when the opponents don't take the first two clubs. Uh, but this two diamond bid uh, sort of wreaked some havoc here. Um, at the other table, uh, they didn't open, so they got a much slower option of two clubs, two diamonds. They now came in with two spades, three hearts. Uh, South said, do you have a stopper? North said, yes, I do. And they didn't have the pressure of the preempt coming on there. Uh, so they managed to stop lower and just play in three no trumps there, uh, which made. Um, another board I wanted to show you is also got a, another preempt at one side. So here... This isn't the two diamond opening, but the other table had that. And here we had an uncontested auction. So it went diamond, two clubs, two hearts. And uh, they managed to work their way to a great contract of uh, six clubs here. Uh, six clubs it is just missing uh, the queen of clubs. You've got everything else well under control. At the other table though, preempts work. So here they open two diamonds again, weak preempt in a major. Um, and I think they were trying to show their five spades to the 10. And this is because they're not vulnerable versus vulnerable. And look at the havoc that ensues after this. So North starts with a double and uh, just went two hearts and South got this great hand. So uh, here, not sure of the two no three diamond bid, but after this five no trumps looks like uh, pick a slam. And uh, North said, well, I've got hearts. And then it looks like South said, well, I thought North was showing hearts and spades and they opted for six spades. They managed to uh, completely miss their club fit or even potentially six no trumps. Six no can go down on a heart lead, uh, but might make in practice. Um, but here, preempts work. It puts people in some unusual spots. So this two diamond bid, which I think shows just a weak, weak two in a major can cause some real grief for people. And when you're not vulnerable, you can bid it very, very aggressively. It's really hard for the opponents to punish you. Anyway, Team Black got a couple of really big swings out of that. So let's check out the uh, scorecard. They picked up 51 to four in that set. Uh, so they're now leading by 44 imps with one stanza to go over the world champions. So a uh, huge win for Team Black in that set. Let's see if they can uh, carry on. But we'll check out the uh, other quarterfinal here as well. So here we have like a really distributional hand. And the first question is with these eight diamonds, what do you open here? So at this table, they elected to open one diamond and North 
favorable vulnerability with a 7-4. Just gets in there and bids four hearts. East has a great hand, so starts with a takeout double because you might be wanting to get to, to spades. Uh, but partner just says, hey, I just want to play in diamonds. And East with their 15 points, King, Queen, Jack of diamonds, no real wasted points, just tries for six diamonds here. At the other table, though, uh, they started with a four diamond opening instead. Now, North is pretty weak, but they do have this seven four shape. Um, so they didn't, with this great distribution, they elected to bid on to four hearts. And now East again, not knowing that their partner hat was as strong as uh, the one diamond opening, elected just to bid five diamonds. Now, uh, South, it, it's this auction's really hard to tell who's actually got what going on. So South with like a relatively decent hand just thinks it was probably their hand uh, and elects to double, but they get to take all 13 trips. But that doesn't score as well as the slam. Bidding and making a slam is more valuable than doubling the opponents in game and letting them have over tricks. So even though they doubled them at a lower level, they still uh, scored better. Now, there's a name for this kind of double, not quite like this position, but it's called a striped-tailed ape double, which is basically when the opponents can make slam and you double them at the five level to try and convince them not to bid six. Here, I don't think they were ever really going to be bidding six, uh, but uh, interesting double, funny score that uh, you can double them here. If, and if that prevents them bidding slam, it's still a good scores for you. Uh, so we'll check out the uh, scorecard here. So AZS uh, went down to Venton here. Um, so Venton, really close uh, final stanza here. Uh, lots of swings each way, uh, but Venton in through to the semifinals and we'll check out all the others. So our semifinalists here, we've got Venton, as I mentioned. Uh, Robinson went up over Wolfson. Nickel, big win over Lucky Four. And Team Black held on. Uh, they, there was a bit of a comeback here, but they held on to knock over the current world champions of Zimmerman. So into the semifinals, uh, the teams include Peter Bertho, Andrew Black, Gunnar Halberg, Simon Holt, and Andrew McIntosh and Thomas Pask. And then Nickel is Eric Greco, Jeff Hampson, Ralph Katz, Bobby Levin, Nick Nickel, Steve Weinstein. Uh, Robinsons, uh, David Berkowitz, David Gold, Daniel Corbell, Zia Mahmood, Jeff Maxroth, and Eric Robinson. And Venton is uh, Guy Mendes de Leon, Joaquin Pacaro, Antonio Palma, Thibo Spritzwiesen, and Juan Carlos Venton and Frederick Rang. So one of them will be our world champions. So exciting semifinals, and we'll see who goes all the way. Thanks all for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.